Hello, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today. So today's video is a roundup of all of my recent sewing makes I've been sewing over the month of May. And I've got a bit of a variety to share. Um, I've got a dress, a trouser set, and I've also got a couple of new makes I haven't shared on my channel so far that I finished over the last week or so. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you what I've been up to and all the details of those makes. But I'll start this video off as ever with sharing what I'm wearing today. And today is a lovely sunny day outside here in the south of England. We're finally getting some sunshine, which is really, really nice. And I've got on a dress I made, I think a couple of summers ago. And I was really happy to put this one on today because I just love the print on this fabric. And the dress pattern I use for this dress is this one here. It is a bit of an old favourite of mine. It is the Stevie Top and Dress Pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. It's one of Tilly and the Buttons earlier patterns and it's a great pattern for beginners. You make it with woven fabric um, and it's quite a simple construction to it. I'll show you the line drawings. It's kind of like a shift dress or loose fitting top with a little um, opening at the back. It's got like a yoke that splits into two parts with a gap at the back. And you can add either a little tie or a button and a loop on the back to sort of fasten it. And then it's got quite a straight shape so you can pretty much pull it on over your head and then just tie it at the back. And you can add on these little sleeve cuffs, which is a nice detail too. And it's just nice and easy and relaxed to wear this one. And it's got a really good size range now too. It's been sort of re-released in an extended size range. So it now goes from UK 6 up to UK 34, which takes it up to a bust of 60 inches. But it's a pattern I tried when I was quite new to sewing and I've made a few versions of the top and a couple of versions of the dress. And I've got a dress version on today. So you can see it's quite a relaxed fit. Um, but what I've done actually is made a little waist tie to cinch it in at the waist. I'll um, stand up slightly so you can see how that looks. So I quite like how it changes the shape of the dress and brings it in at the waist. But I do sometimes wear it without the tie, particularly on a really hot day when I, went, when I want something really nice and loose and billowy on. And the Stevie I'm wearing today, I made in this really beautiful um, woven viscose fabric that I got from Self Made. I had a look and this print unfortunately is now not in stock online anymore but I love this print it's got this really pretty almost royal blue base it looks a bit darker on the camera than it is in real life and it's got this lovely floral print with lots of different styles of white flowers with little pops of orange um, and green in there too I just think it's such a pretty print and I remember when I got this fabric thinking the Stevie would be a perfect match for it because it's got quite a simple shape to it so the print really stands out I think and I'll pop a picture up so you can see what the dress looks like on with a little waist tie around the middle. But yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. But I'll move on now to sharing all of my sewing makes from May. So the first make that I've got to share is I think one of my favourite makes from this month, particularly um, in terms of actually how much I enjoyed the sewing process because this make is a shirt dress and I do love sewing a shirt dress. I love the construction of all the details, like the placket, and the collar and all that sort of thing so yeah it's a shirt dress and I made it using a pattern that came from this book here which is the breaking the pattern book by named clothing It's their first pattern book I think they've released two now and it kind of um, includes a sort of capsule wardrobe of different garments that you can are intended to sort of be worn and mixed and matched together and it's a really interesting collection but I've only made one pattern from here to date but I really love that one. I'd like to try some more. And the pattern I've made, just need to find the right page for it, is this one here. It is the Sarast shirt dress. So the Sarast pattern comes in three different versions. There's like a shirt and the dress and the top. But when I got this book, I particularly had my eye on a shirt dress because I do love a shirt dress pattern. So the Sarast shirt dress has some really pretty details to it that I think make it a bit different to your average shirt dress. Um, so it's got a gathered skirt and this panelled bodice with princess seams at the front and a yoke at the back. And then I particularly like how the front panels um, run all the way down the dress and they're flat. So the gathering only goes round the sides and the back of the dress. And I think that's a really pretty feature. It's got a short sleeve. 
it's designed to be midi length and it's got a collar and it's quite hard to see on this tiny um, line drawing but the collar has this little ruffle at the front which I think is another lovely detail of this pattern. In terms of sizing it's available in the book in a UK 6 to a 22 which takes you up to a bust of 46 inches and I've made two versions of the Sarast shirt dress. I made one in a midi length last summer and I really really enjoyed wearing it and then this year Fabric Godmother released a new collection of their fabrics. They release them every now and then using vintage prints from a vintage sort of print archive and they'll put them on different fabric bases and they released this beautiful cotton lawn fabric that had this lovely print on and I immediately thought I would love to make a shirt dress out of that fabric and I thought I'd love to re revisit the Saras dress and maybe change up a little bit and make a different version for my second version. So that's what I did this month so I'll grab my shirt dress to show you how it turned out but you may have seen it already on my channel if you've been watching my sort of weekly catch-ups I sort of talked a little bit through them about how I was getting on with this one but I'll show you it now. So here is my Sarast shirt dress. You can see the print is such a pretty one. I love the sort of blue colour um, of the fabric. I thought it was quite a pretty and unusual blue colour. And it's got a floral print on these sort of peachy and orangey flowers on that I thought was a really lovely one. And I thought a cotton lawn would make a perfect Sarast shirt dress. So yeah, this is my shirt dress. It's got the lovely ruffle detail on the collar. It's got the yoke detail at the back. The princess seams and this sort of flat panel at the front and the short sleeves and I added on these fun orange buttons that I thought um, matched really well with the orangey flowers and I added on some little blue thread to sew them on to tie in with the blue so yeah I really enjoyed all the details on this one it's got the lovely gathering the only thing this dress doesn't have is pockets um, it doesn't come with a pocket a pocket a, a pocket pattern piece um, but I guess you could always borrow one from another pattern and add them if you wanted to but yeah, this is my version. Um, in terms of sizing and adjustments, for this version, I made a UK 6 on the bust and the waist, and then I graded out to an 8 at the hips. And my measurements would actually put me as a UK 6 on the bust, but a UK 8 on the waist and hips. But I decided to size down one size on this version at the waist, because I think this pattern is designed to be semi-fitted at the waist. But I thought for my second version, I quite fancied bringing it in a little bit more and making it a little bit more fitted so I just adjust the pattern pieces slightly to bring it in there just to give a slightly different fit to my first version. I love my first version too and I love that fit but I just thought it'd be nice to change it up a little bit and then the only other change I made is to shorten the skirt a little bit so I made this one around a knee length rather than a midi length I think I might have taken off about six inches or so to bring up to that length and I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and I've also written a blog post all about this dress as well. So I'll link that down below in case you fancy having a read. It's got all the details about um, how I found it to sew, all of the adjustments and that sort of thing. So yeah, that is my first make for May, the Saras shirt dress. I really love it. I find it's really nice and comfy to wear too and lovely and light in the cotton lawn. So perfect for kind of warmer weather. So hopefully I'll get a lot of wear out of them and now the weather is warming up. But yeah, that is my first make. Oh, and I should have added, unfortunately, that Fabric Godmother cotton lawn fabric seems to be out of stock now. It was obviously quite a popular print. But in this video, wherever I mention um, patterns and fabrics, I will try to link them wherever possible down below. So do check the links below in case there's anything you see that you are interested in yourself. So the next make I've got to share is a garment that I've wanted in my wardrobe for quite a while. And I had in mind a pattern I wanted to use and this month I finally got round to getting the fabric and actually getting this one sewn up. And the garment I wanted to sew is quite a simple classic denim skirt and the pattern I had in mind that I wanted to use was this one here which is the Moss Skirt Pattern by Grainline Studio. It's a pattern I'd used before to make quite a wintry corduroy skirt and I'd used it a couple of times for that purpose. But I always thought when I'd been sewing it and when I'd been wearing those skirts it would also make a great denim skirt because it has quite a lot of those kind of classic jean style features on it. So it's quite a simple mini skirt or you can make it into a knee length skirt with this panel at the bottom of the skirt and it's got a fly front zipper slash pockets. It's got yoke at the back 
I think it's designed to sit just slightly below your natural waist. It hasn't got the biggest size range ever. It goes from a US size 0 up to a size 18 and the largest size is for a waist of 37 inches. But it's a pattern I sort of tweaked a little bit through my previous makes I'm using the corduroy fabrics. So I fe felt like I had a good idea of what I needed to do to get it to fit me. So it should be a fairly straightforward pattern to use for me to make a denim skirt. So I found some denim fabric um, on Guthrie Garney's website. I had a little bit of a research online because I had in mind the sort of colour of denim I wanted. And I knew I wanted a denim that was fairly rigid and fairly sort of weighty to make um, a sort of proper substantial denim skirt that would be a bit like the equivalent to a pair of jeans that would hopefully wear well. And I found some fabric from Guthrie Garney. It is their 11.7 ounce rigid denim and cotton fabric in mid blue. I think they have a little bit still in stock, so I'll link it down below. And I felt like it was a bit of a gamble ordering denim online because it's not a fabric I've ordered a lot of, so I wasn't quite sure what would turn up. But actually what turned up was just what I was hoping for. So yeah, I was quite glad that arrived. <laughs> so yeah, this is my uh, moss skirt using that denim fabric. As you can see, it's just a really simple classic skirt. Um, I made the mini skirt version without the extra panel at the bottom. But I did lengthen the skirt just slightly by an inch or two because when I looked at the pattern piece, it thought like it looked like it might come up really quite short if I didn't add a bit of length. Um, and I'm five foot six for reference. So it's got the fly front. It's got this um, denim um, button I added that I um, added on using my prim vario pliers, which I find makes adding things like these buttons so easy. It's got the zip, as you can see, um, it's got the slash pockets, it's got the yoke at the back, um, and I used actually some fabric you'll recognise from my last make. I used the offcuts from my Sarast shirt dress for the pocket bags, I thought that worked quite well. And yeah, this came together quite nicely. Um, yeah, I added quite a lot of top stitching, which the pattern doesn't really specify, just because I wanted to give it that jeansy look. So you can see I added top stitching on the pockets, um, down the front, um, around the yoke too. And for the top stitching, I used um, Guterman denim thread, which I hadn't come across before, but I saw Lauren from Guthrie Garney talking about in one of her videos. And it's um, in terms of the, the thread, it's somewhere between like a sew all thread and a top stitching thread in terms of how um, heavy duty it is. You can use it in the bobbin as well as on top if you want to. And I quite liked it because I thought it gave a bit more of a subtle top stitching effect using this sort of goldy colour than I would have had with the Guterman top stitching thread, which would have been a bit more of a chunky thread and a bit more obvious. So I quite liked it being a bit more subtle. And one really great tip I found actually on the Grainline Studio website was for top stitching. And they recommended if you have a quarter inch quilting foot, then that is great for using to do your second line of top stitching once you've marked out your first line to do the second line use that quilting foot and you'll get a perfect gap of a quarter of inch between those top stitching lines and I have a quilting foot um, because I did do some quilting last year so I was quite excited to get that out and give it a try and it worked really really well it didn't work so well on curved lines like when I was top stitching round and um, the fly zip here but on all the straight lines of top stitching that I definitely recommend a quarter inch foot it works so well so yeah that is my denim skirt. The only really tricky bit in terms of the construction was sewing the buttonhole because the fabric is quite bulky here. So I ended up having to sew that manually um, rather than using my automatic buttonhole function on my machine. Um, but other than that, we came together really nicely. In terms of sizing and adjustments, when I make the moss skirt, I make a size zero at the waist and a size two at the hips. My measurements would put me as a straight size two, but I sized down at the waist just because I quite like the skirt to sit right on my natural waist rather than slightly below like the pattern intends. So I found by grading in one size there, it just brings it in a bit more snugly around my waist. And then the main adjustment I made was around this area at the back because I've got a bit of a sway back. So I think if I made this pattern straight out of the envelope, I end up with a bit of excess fabric here. Um, so I ended up sort of shortening the yoke, like taking some depth out of the yoke, um, just to reduce the amount of extra fabric there so it sits a bit better at the back. But I'll put up a couple of pictures so you can see what it looks like on. I'll put up a picture of the front and then I'll also put up a picture of the back too so you can see how it sits around the back. Um, I think there's probably a teeny wrinkle there still, um, 
but I felt like um, it, I adjusted it enough so it's not too obvious. And I think probably, actually, if I had a look at how my other jeans, my ready-to-wear jeans fit, there's always a little bit of a wrinkle there anyway. So, yeah, I feel like I've done my best to get a good fit and I'm fairly happy with how it's ended up. And I'm just really pleased to have this skirt in my wardrobe because it's such a classic one. I think it will look really great in summer with like a relaxed fit t-shirt or a vest top. Um, and I think I'll be able to sort of wear it in winter with a cosy jumper too. So I'm glad to have finally made this one. So that is my second make from May. So I thought I'd mix it up now and share one of my new makes that I haven't shared on my channel at all yet, that I just finished this week. And this is a new make and also a new pattern for me. It's a fairly new pattern actually. It was only released maybe a couple of months ago or so. But when it was released, I really liked the look of it. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to sew and also perfect for some scrap busting too, which is always a bonus. And the pattern is this one here. It is the MET by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I've made a couple of Jennifer Lauren patterns before, but not loads of them, but I really like the look of this one. So it's a quite relaxed fit um, top, designed to be made in jersey fabrics. If you make the long sleeve, it's got this sort of drop shoulder and long sleeve added on, or you can make this short sleeve version with a grown on sleeve. It's got a fairly wide neckline. And the thing I really liked about this pattern particularly was this slash and piece bodice option here, which I think is really clever. You sort of piece together the front bodice using smaller pieces of jersey fabric, which is great for scrap busting, to make a really cute top. And um, it's a bit different because I guess you'll be the only one that has it depending on what scraps you choose. It's got a really good size range, this pattern too. There are two size bands available. The original size band goes from a um, UK 6 to a 24 and comes in A and B and C and D cups. And there's also a curved size range which goes from a UK 16 up to a 34. And that one is available in C and D and E and F cups. But yeah, I just thought it'd be a lot of fun to try. And I especially like the idea of trying this version here because I have got a, a quite a few smaller pieces of jersey scraps um, in my sort of fabric suitcase, which has got all my fabric leftover pieces. And a few of those fabrics, some of them I've made into sort of um, knickers for myself or for my daughter. But there's a few fabrics that almost seem too nice to turn into knickers where no one will see them. So I thought it'd be nice to have them all on show on a cute t-shirt. So I made my first version um, and it was really fun to sew it up actually, and it came together really nicely. I find that Jennifer Lauren handmade instructions are really detailed, really comprehensive. They go into loads of detail of every particular step um, and really hold your hand through the whole sewing process. And I also found with the pattern, the MET pattern, there's one of those patterns where all the notches just lined up perfectly. Everything felt like it was exactly in the right place, which I don't always find on sewing patterns. Sometimes I find things just don't quite exactly match up, but this one, yeah, it was perfection in terms of how it came together. So it's a really enjoyable pattern to sew and I had a lot of fun actually in choosing the fabrics for my t-shirt. So I decided to go for with my first version, just this simple t-shirt, um, just because actually based on the fabric I had, that was what I'd be able to squeeze out. I didn't have quite enough of the fabrics I'd chosen for the long sleeve version. And I thought it'd be a good tester for kind of fit and sizing. And I went for a size eight based on my measurements um, and based on my uh, bust being calculated as a B cup. I kind of calculated it based on the how they, uh, how they show you to calculate it in here by calculating a sort of high bust and your full bust. And that all um, brought me out as a straight size eight. So I made a straight size eight and here is my MET. Um, and yeah, I love how it's turned out. I think it's really fun. Um, so all of the fabrics I use for this one are left over from other projects. This green jersey, which I've also used the back, I originally used for an Agnes top by Tilling the Buttons. Um, this rainbow jersey, I've had the scraps for this in my stash for so long. Um, I think I made another Agnes top actually, funnily enough, in this fabric very, very early in my sewing journey. And I still really enjoy wearing the Agnes top. And this is one of those fabrics I thought was a bit too nice to just make into knickers. And then this fabric here, this lovely rainbow print leopard, um, print rainbow print leopard print fabric this originally is a freya top by tilling the buttons another tilling the buttons pattern um and i've still got that one and i love wearing it particularly if i'm in the mood wearing something really bright and colorful and this fabric here 
it's another cotton jersey, they're all cotton jerseys. And this one again was a Freya top. So yeah, this is fabric is left over from two Agnes tops and two Freya tops. And I thought all the sort of rainbow prints went together quite nicely and a bit of stripe and a bit of leopard there. I just thought it was a lot of fun to, yeah, put together. So yeah, it came together really nicely. The fit is really good. Um, I find particularly the shoulder seams sit right on my shoulder. I often find I have to make a slight forward shoulder adjustment on a lot of patterns, but this shoulder seam just sits bang down the middle of my shoulder. So yeah, I really love the fit of it. Oh, and the short sleeve version has these really cute little sleeve cuffs too. Instead of hemming the sleeves, you add on these little sleeve bands, which I think is a really nice finish there. And I quite like how that ties in a bit more with the green there. So yeah, it was a really fun make and I love that I've used up some of my scraps and I'll be able to enjoy wearing them. I think I'll probably team this just with a pair of jeans um, and make the top the real standout item when I'm wearing it. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and see the fit. It's not designed to be a tight fitting t-shirt, it's a bit more relaxed fit, which I quite like. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And now I'd really like to have a go of making a long sleeve version too. So I need to go back to my um, fabric scrap suitcase and have a look for some different fabrics to choose um, to make another slash and piece um, version with the long sleeve. But yeah, definitely recommend the ME t-shirt. It was a really fun sew. So the next make that I've got to share is actually two makes. It is a top and trouser set. And I think this set might be my favourite make for this month, or at least it's up there at the top together with my Sarast shirt dress. They're both jostling for first place. But I think this set might edge it, and that's particularly because I wasn't really sure how much I was going to like this set when I was sewing it. Um, but actually, it's turned out that I really love it, and it's a bit of an unexpected surprise as to how much I love this one. So that is why it might sort of, yeah, have top place for my favourite make for this month. But it's a set I made using this pattern here, which is a saguaro set pattern by Friday Pattern Co. So it's a woven top and trouser pattern. I'll show you the line drawings. You've probably seen this one. It is, has been really popular, this pattern. So it's a woven top with this sort of plunging V neckline and elastic at the bottom, which sort of brings it in. And it's got this sort of loose billowy sleeve that's grown on. And you can also add a little optional tie at the front here just to add a little bit more modesty, I guess, and stop it from gaping at all at the bust. And then the trousers are quite a wide-legged, loose-fit trouser, but they're cinched in at the waist by elastic. They've got a slash pocket and optional waist ties. And I was a bit concerned originally about showing a bit of midriff um, with this pattern. But actually, the trousers, I think, are designed to sit right on your natural waist. They come up quite high. And then you can lengthen the top a little bit too, so you don't show too much um, in the middle. And that's sort of maybe a bit more comfortable about it. And then in terms of sizing, the Saguaro's has a really good size range. I think Friday Pattern Company patterns generally do. I'll just find the size chart. Um, so it goes from an extra small up to a 7X, which takes you up to a bust of 60 inches and hips of 63 inches. But yeah, I wasn't sure about this set on me. Firstly, because of sort of yeah thinking I wasn't sure about flashing my midriff but also because I don't really tend to wear trousers very much I wear a pair of jeans I wear jeans quite a lot but I don't really wear other sort of woven trousers um, and in the summer I generally sort of alternate between dresses and skirts mainly so I thought it might actually be quite nice to have a pair of trousers in my wardrobe so a summer pair so I thought it might be quite fun to actually give these a go and um, I did make the Sophia trousers by Tilling the Buttons last year and I've really enjoyed wearing those. So I did think, yeah, I should really give these ones a try too. So I first made this pattern last year. I just tried out the top. At that point, I really wasn't sure about it at all, but I thought it might be fun just to give it a go. And I had some leftover fabric from another project that I thought I could just squeeze the top out of. And I actually really enjoyed sewing it and I really enjoyed wearing it. So yeah, this year I thought I'd give the trousers a go and I thought I'd make a little top to go with the trousers. Um, I bought some new fabric for the trousers and then the top I made out of another fabric scrap because I find you don't need too much fabric for this top so it's quite a nice scrap buster and perfect for some sort of leftover viscose I had. So yeah I thought I'd give it a go so I made the trousers first I'll show you the trousers first and here they are. Um, I went for a, oh, I've got ties at the front, um, I went for a black linen viscose mix fabric from Guthrie Garney. They have a whole range of this fabric in stock. It is, I think, 75% viscose and 25% linen. 
So it's got a bit of weight to it and more than a sort of classic viscose chalet, um, which I think is quite nice for trousers. But it's got a lovely drape and it's got a bit of the linen texture to it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's got a bit of texture to it. Um, it's really lovely and soft. It was really nice to sew with and I think it's perfect for a pair of swishy trousers. So I added on the waist ties. It's got the pockets. It's got a nice elasticated waist. Um, and yeah, they're a really nice sew. I find both the saguaro top and the trousers both sew up really quite nicely. They're quite straightforward sews. They come together quite quickly. Um, and I made a couple of adjustments to the pattern. I did make a little toile um, of this pattern before I made my actual proper, or I cut into my proper fabric. I um, used some old viscose fabric that I wasn't particularly keen on to make a sort of pair of shorts I wasn't planning to wear. Just to check the sort of crotch depth, because um, I find I sometimes need to lengthen there because I have quite a long body um, from my shoulders to my crotch. Um, so I thought I might need to lengthen it a bit to make sure that it's not too tight when the waist sits on my natural waist. And I ended up um, lengthening the crotch by the sort of area here, along here, by an inch. Although actually in hindsight, I think probably only needed about half an inch adjustment because it is actually quite generous in terms of the length here on this pattern. I also lengthen the legs quite a lot because I wasn't sure what length I wanted these trousers, whether I wanted them full length or a little bit cropped. And I actually, in my final pair of trousers, ended up chopping off the extra length I've added and pretty much bringing them back to how the pattern intended. So they kind of sit a little bit cropped, which I quite like. I'll pop a picture in a moment up in, so you can see how they sit on me. I think I mentioned before I'm five foot six, which hopefully give you a bit of an idea of, yeah, how they look on that sort of height. Um, but yeah, they're really nice. So in terms of the size of these, um, I made the size medium. So the size medium, let me just get the sizing charts up again, would, um, the size medium, where am I? would fit was was actually it's actually slightly large for me on both the waist and the hips i'm more of a size small on the waist and hips when i was having a look online on instagram and looking at how they fitted on different people and then it's always really helpful i find on instagram when people put their sizing and what size they went for and i had a little look and found a few um, examples of that so i could get an idea of how they looked and i found that i thought i'd like a little bit more room in them um, than my actual size so i decided to size up one size just to give a little bit of extra relaxed look around the hips and I also thought then I wouldn't bother grading between sizes and bring it down the waist because when I added in the elastic around the waist I could just cinch it in a little bit more and shorten the elastic a bit more and it, so it's probably ended up a little bit more gathered um, than it should be around the waist because I've had to bring it in a bit more but actually this fabric is fairly lightweight so it's not ended up too bulky around the waist and also I quite like the bit of extra gathering I think it adds a nice detail so yeah, I actually sized up one size on both the waist and hips, and I quite like how that's turned out. So those are my trousers, and I'll show you the top and then put a picture up of the whole outfit together so you can see how it looks. Um, here is my saguaro top that I made to go with those pants. Um, so as you can see, I kind of matched it in with this sort of black. Um, I used this lovely viscose chalet fabric. This one um, I got quite a while ago from Rainbow Fabrics. And I originally used the fabric to make a wilder gown sleeveless hack. But I had a decent amount left over. I think I bought that fabric thinking I'd use more of it for my for a dress. And I, the actual wilder gown sleeveless dress doesn't take too much fabric. So I had a decent amount left over to make this top. Um, and I think it's really cute. And I really love how it's turned out, actually. So you can see it's got a deep V at the front. I didn't add on the optional ties on this version. Um, I did on my first version, but I wanted to keep this one really clean. But what I did do was I overlapped it a little bit more at the front, just to give a little bit more modesty there. That did mean I had to adjust the front um, panel here, slightly to bring it in slightly, because I'd used a slightly shorter length by overlapping this a bit more. So I just had to bring that in slightly. Um, and then in terms of sizing and adjustments on this one, I made a size extra small at the bust and I graded out to a size small at the waist based on my measurements and I lengthened this bodice on this one by one inch I think I lengthened my first one by one and a half inches and so it meant it sat with a little bit more blousiness around the bodice um how it sat but I thought by this one by just chopping it off by half an inch on my first version so it's still lengthened by an inch but not quite as much it would just sit quite neatly and wouldn't be too blousy and billowy which I particularly didn't want because I had omitted the waist, the, um, the front bust ties, so I didn't want it sort of sitting too loose here um, and revealing anything. 
But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out, actually. I love the finish. I love the bias binding around the neckline. I love how loose and billowy these sleeves are. It's perfect for a hot day. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. And as you can see, there's not too much of my midriff showing because the trousers do come up quite high and I have length in the top a little bit. So I feel quite comfortable wearing it and I really love both pieces. I think I'll wear them together in the summer, but also separately as well. Um, I think the trousers will go with so many different tops. And I think this top will be really cute with like a skirt or a pair of jeans or a pair of shorts too. So yeah, and I really love how they both turned out. They're both really fun sews and I'm definitely glad I gave this pattern a go, even though when I initially saw it, I wasn't sure it was going to be for me. So the next make that I've got to share is another new make that I haven't shared on my channel before because I only finished this one a couple of days ago. And it's a bit of an interesting make this one and I'm really proud of myself for having given it a go because it combined two things I'm not 100% confident with, which is sewing swimwear and big four patterns. So it's basically a swimsuit I made using a big four pattern. And in terms of sewing swimwear, I have sewn some swimwear before, always using indie patterns before, um, but it's not something I feel that confident sewing or that I enjoy sewing that much. I do love to be able to sew my own swimwear because I like that I can make it fit well and make it practical but pretty too, and I found that really hard to find in the shops. So I do really enjoy having my own swimwear, but I don't really enjoy the process of making it so much. It's one of those things I definitely make because I want to have the final garment rather than for the joy of sewing it. And then big four patterns is also an area I'm not that confident um, with. I haven't sewn a great deal of them over the years. I do generally tend to stick to the indie patterns mostly. Just I'm not so confident on the sizing and I find the instructions aren't always as detailed. They're a bit hard to read sometimes. But um, I wanted to sew myself up a new piece of swimwear for this summer. And I was browsing the fold line database and looking at all their swimwear pattern recommendations. And I saw this particular swim pattern. I really liked the look of it. So I thought, let's just give it a go and see how I get on. So this is the pattern here. It is a new look pattern. It is new look um, 6734. And I thought it was just a really cute swimsuit. So this is the option here I went for. There are two different variations here. They both have this sort of one shoulder design and this cutout section here. And there's this version here, version B, has this sort of waist tie added on too. It also comes with this skirt, this like wrap skirt that's I guess is designed to be a sort of swim cover up. But I bought this pattern particularly, um, wanting to make version A here because I thought I've got a few bikinis, but it would be nice to have a swimming costume. And I thought that looked quite interesting, but also looked like it would cover me up quite nicely and be quite practical to wear if I'm in the pool with the kids. In terms of sizing on this pattern, it goes from an eight to a 20, and that takes you from a bust of 30 and a half inches up to a bust of 42 inches. So it's not got a very broad size range on this one. But yeah, I just thought I'd give it a try. I thought I've got a few um, pieces of swimmer under my belt, so hopefully it's a good time now to kind of, yeah, just put myself a bit out of my comfort zone and give a big four swimmer pattern a go. So that's what I did, and I made my swimming costume up in some plain black swim fabric, this fabric here. This is a Liberty swim fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. They've got quite a nice range of Liberty print swim fabrics and also Liberty plain swim fabrics. I'll link the range down below. Um, and I just wanted quite something quite simple. I thought it would just be nice and clean and simple in a plain black. And so this is my finished swimming costume, which is quite hard to hold up actually because it kind of flops about the place. But... You can see it's got this one shoulder, it's got this cutout detail, this is the back, that's the front. Um, yeah, and actually it wasn't as bad as I thought actually to sew it up, so I'm glad I gave it a go. In terms of sizing, I decided to make the size 8. That is sizing down on my measurements. The size 8 is designed for body measurements of bust 30 and a half inches, waist 23 inches and hips 32 and a half inches. So quite a lot smaller than me, I'd be a size 10 based on the, the bust measurement and a size 12 on the waist and hips. But actually, I got the pattern piece out and I sort of overlaid other swimming costumes or sort of bikinis I'd made using indie patterns to kind of compare the sizes because I'm never quite sure on big four sizes. And actually, it looked like the smallest size seemed to fit those pattern pieces I cut out of my indie patterns before. So I thought I'll size down. It's stretchy. Fingers crossed it'll be okay. I did make a few adjustments. 
I mentioned before I've got quite a long body and I found before when I've made swimming costumes they've come up a little bit tight um, if I haven't lengthened them and a bit uncomfortable and feeling like I'm being a bit squished. So I lengthened this um, pattern. I added on an half an inch here at the top of the shoulder strap to give a bit more room there. I also had to add on half an inch across the body here and then I added on um, one and a half inches to the um, length of the pants to bring them up a little bit because I wanted them to sit more towards my natural waist and it looked like they might sit a bit more lower waisted. So I thought if I bring them up like that it'll lengthen the body nicely and also add a little bit more coverage there. So I lengthened it by quite a lot overall and I was a bit worried it'd be too much but I thought I could always take a bit more out of this point and sort of bring that back down at a later stage if I needed. Um, but actually it turned out fine and I quite like the length of it. I'll put up a picture in a moment so you can see I don't think it looks like it's too long. It feels like it's all quite securely held in place. The costume is fully lined which I really like um, so it feels like a nice quality piece of swimwear now with this sort of your double layer of fabric and actually the instructions weren't too bad or they weren't as bad as I thought they might be that sounds really harsh I wasn't expecting them too bad I just was expecting that I might find them a little bit harder to follow than I would an indie pattern um, but actually they were quite nice and clear I do think having sewn a few pieces of swimwear already and having that under my belt did help a little bit um, to understand a couple of the steps. But actually the whole process I find found came together really nicely and I love how it's constructed. I think it's really nicely constructed actually so I think it's a really nice pattern and it was actually it was I wouldn't say it's an enjoyable sew because it's not my favourite to sew with but it wasn't as bad as I expected and I did I actually was really pleased with how it turned out so I'm really glad I gave it a go. One thing I thought I'd try for this swimming costume was I thought I'd try to use some Mariflex thread to sew it um, rather than a zigzag because I had some black Mariflex thread left over from another project and it's a stretchy thread that you can use on um, stretchy fabrics just so you don't have to use a zigzag you can just sew it in a straight line it'll just stretch which is really clever um, so I thought it'd be perfect for swimwear um, and I looked online and it said Mariflex was suitable for swimwear so I threaded my machine up with the Mariflex thread and gave it a go, but it just my machine did not get on with the Mariflex and the swim fabric together. It just kept sti skipping stitches. I tried re-threading the needle, I tried a new needle, I tried doing my, various things to mess around with it to try and get it to work, but it just, it just did not want to work at all. I started to think that maybe my, my stretch needles were all old and maybe it was something to do with those, so I changed back to some plain sew all black thread instead. And actually that worked fine. Um, so I think it was just something to do with the swim fabric and the Mariflex that my machine didn't like and it couldn't quite get the grip and sort of make it work. So I ended up sewing it all using zigzags. You can see a zigzag stitch there, which is fine and which is what I've used on swimwear before. I just thought it'd be really cool to be able to use Mariflex instead. Um, but yeah, unfortunately my machine was not keen on that idea. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, it came together really nicely as swimsuit in the end. So I'm really glad I gave it a go and I would recommend this pattern I love that it's lined. I think the construction of how all the different seams come together is really good. And the pictures are really clear in the pattern too, in terms of which bits you have to attach to which bits. Because there's a bit of fiddliness in terms of attaching it all together and making sure you attach the right sides or wrong sides, whichever ones together. So that when you pull it all out, it's all nicely lined and yeah, comes together nicely. Um, but I'll put a picture up so you can see what this costume looks like on. I really like it actually. I think it's a bit different. It does cover me up nicely. It feels quite secure on. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that I gave this pattern a go. So those are all of my sewing makes from May. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about them. I had a really fun month on the sewing front, actually. I really enjoyed sewing all of those garments and I can't wait to wear them all now the weather's getting a bit warmer here. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for dropping by. Please do subscribe and also press the bell icon so you'll be notified when I bring out my future videos. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and manage to squeeze in a little bit of crafting and I'll hopefully see you for another video again soon. So thank you again and see you soon. Bye!